And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries and welcome to Second Chances here on Lift FM. This is the program every Tuesday evening in which if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you understand that our God is the only true God and he is the father of second chances. And to be very honest and frank with you, (laughs) not just a second chance, but a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, because As humans, we all sin, and we all many, many times fall short of the glory, but because God thought enough of us and loved us so much that he sent Jesus to the cross, we live under grace, and that means that our sins are forgiven if we just ask. And as a matter of fact, the number one reason this program is on is to give those of you who have been seeking for the Lord and searching, we're going to give you the chance before this program is done to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. And we have a wonderful guest with us today. As you were listening to the program last week, we had Pastor Lawrence J. Moore on the program. He, of course, is the pastor of Empowerment Life-Changing Worship Center, and we are privileged to have his wife with us today, Ayana Moore. And, uh, you know, I just have to do this, uh, um, Ayana. I began the program last week with your husband, and I said this. The Lord sometimes puts us in a place where we didn't think we would be. Mm. Not the way we thought it was going to be. So if I pose that same question to you, what would you tell me? I would totally agree with you that oftentimes we find ourselves in positions and predicaments that we would have never thought that we would be in. Um, You had shared with my you met with my husband last week and um, I wouldn't even have known that me and him would even have been married <laughs> to believe it or not. And it is just amazing the way the Lord rises up opportunities and opens up doors and things like that. And, and, and the reason I brought that up with your husband last week was because, you know, if I ever said to him, you know, a few years ago, you ever heard of a place called Millville, New Jersey, you know, he'd probably say, no, is that up there near New York City? He'd yeah. probably said something like that, right? Exactly. He had no idea um, about a place called Millville, New Jersey, and yet this is where the Lord has led him to be, and this is where our ministry um, has been birthed out. So the final thing on, on that particular topic, uh, when you arrived in Millville, New Jersey, did, did, did you say that to yourself as well? This is not what I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I did. I, I'm actually from around this area. I'm from um, Atlantic County, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. I'm from Atlantic County. Um, but Millville, this is where the Lord has me has me to be at. Well, I can tell you I'm from Millville, believe it or not. Oh. I never suspected that I would end up spending my adult life here and having a business and a ministry here. Yeah. But the Lord wanted me here, so here exactly. I am, and I'm okay with it. I I, I, I very fond of this area believe Amen. it or not but okay now let's let's go back okay who is a Anna Moore was she born in a Christian home uh, has she always served Jesus give us your story uh my story is so long but I'll give you the short we version. have a half hour okay. so n- no need to worry <laughs> all right um well actually I um came from a family that would go to church on holidays I never was really raised into church um, I came from a, um, my father was a drug addict and, um, we had a lot of problems. He left the home when I was nine years old. And from that point on, I went through a lot of rebellion. I didn't know who I was. I was finding or trying to find my validation in, um, just bad relationships, just a lot of different things. Um, in school, I was a troubled teen and, um, I would have never imagined serving and being where I'm at now from where I was at and how I grew up. So Ayana is a former troubled teen, former promiscuous person, former a lot of things. Um, But God was merciful and he he saved my life. Behind every Christian is a wonderful testimony. Amen, that's true. So could we kind of get your testimony from you? Um, I, I was saved April 7, 2003, and I remember it like it was yesterday because it was such a drastic change. Um, I was one of those people who just lived life to do whatever I wanted to do. I, I didn't know that there was another way. So oftentimes, you know, I was out 
at the bars, drinking. I was in my, my 20s. Um, I had been previously married. Um, this is my second marriage. So I was married. I was going through nursing school, but I just felt the void in my life. I didn't understand what the void was. I just remember saying just a general vague prayer, like, Lord, there has to be more to life than this. And yet from people, if they were looking on the outside, they would think, well, she has, I own my own home. And, you know, they it looked like I had what people would normally be satisfied and content with, but I, I wasn't. I was drinking. I was just, you know, a real mess. Um, but April 7th, I went over one of my friend's house and she says, here, you let's watch a church tape. And I said, I'm not watching a church tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I didn't I didn't even know that they had like church ministries. Like that's how distant I was from church. And um I said, I'm not watching a church tape. And she, she was determined. And I realized now that the Lord was using her. Um, and she put that church tape on. And to be honest, I don't even remember what the message was. I just remember that there was like light that just began to come in. It, it just was totally, it was like a road to Damascus. Like I said, I was out drinking, you know, partying the night before. And I put, when she put that church tape in, it just spoke to my spirit. And basically what I found was there was more to life than this. I, I didn't understand what that more was, but I knew at that moment that, that I had something on the inside of me that the enemy was trying to, to, to take out. And from that point on, I, I said the sinner's prayer. I'm like, Lord, you know, I had called some people that were Christians and we said the sinner's prayer. I gave my life to the Lord. I went to Bible study that Wednesday and I interrupted the whole Bible study. I just could it was like a fire in me. I couldn't even shut up. They were saying, anyone has anything to say? And I'm like, I, you know, and I just started to tell my testimony. And from that point on, April 7th, 2003, I've been on fire for the Lord. And just, I, I mean, I just love them. Mm. So I imagine a, a question that you you may encounter and probably have heard before. I know I've had for people that are on the fence of giving their life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. They'll say, "How do you know that you know that you know that you're saved?" Oh, you you definitely know the things that you the, the, your thoughts you know, your actions, different things. It, there's Before, I didn't have any conviction. You know, I would just do whatever I wanted to do. Now it's, it seemed like, you know what, Ayana, that's not the right way. That's not the right decision. Um, as well as just wanting to know more about God. And to be honest, I wasn't a person who was scared of hell you know, and I know that there's some people who preach like fire and brimstone, you know, you don't, you know, if you don't stop doing this, if you don't stop doing that, you're going to go to hell. That wasn't what really drew me and changed my life. It was the fact that the Lord, I started to feel an overwhelming sense of love. You know, I felt like the Lord actually loved me despite my failures, despite my falls, despite all of the things that I had done. God loved me and he had a better plan for my life than what I had. And that's what really started to, to change my life and let me know that I really was saved. Uh, back to that little phrase, not the way I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, obviously you said you had that uh, void and used to know a pastor. Uh, I really thought a lot of this lady, she was a, a pastor and she said, well, you know, that, that life used to live there, Greg, that wasn't hitting on nothing. <laughs> and uh, I never forgot that because it really explained mm -hmm. all that stuff that is a sinner you're searching for, but you're never really content. You don't really feel at peace until you give your heart to the Lord. But once you make that decision, the things that you used to do that were not right, you just don't want to be around that. It's true. I mean, it, it's true. I mean, I can remember a time in my life that I would not mind going to to a bar mm -hmm. i just didn't mind it I, at the time i smoked and different things mm -hmm. and you know once i made that decision obviously the cigarettes were gone the mm -hmm. lord took them from me just like that but i can remember in my life i just don't want to be around those situations mm -hmm. i don't want to be where people are talking with foul language and there's bad i just don't want to be around it so that's one way i, I can re relate and, and i'm sure some of our listeners can relate but uh, in your case, Ayana, you uh, thought you were going to be a nurse. You went to nursing school. Mm -hmm. You probably thought that your first husband, you were going to be with him forever. Mm -hmm. I, I know that my first wife, I thought the same. Um, so how did you get from 
that life to this life. And if I'd have said to you 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, Ayana, you're going to be a pastor's wife. <laughs> what would you have said to that? And how did you get, get to this place? I, I would have said that there, I, I would have believed that there was no possible way. Um, but what I found is the more I sought after God and just wanted to learn more. And like you were saying, you don't want to do the things that you used to do. And I think that that was a big misunderstanding that I had prior to getting saved was, oh, well, and it's so funny because we don't have real fun anyway, but I said, well, we're not going to, I'm not going to have any fun. I'm going to have to stop this. I'm going to have to stop that. And the reality is, like you mentioned, you, it, it's not that God is saying you have to stop it. You don't want to do those things anymore. And that's something that I discovered once I gave my life to the Lord. I didn't want to do those things. I, I wanted more God because that's what gave me that fulfillment. That's what spoke to me. That's what gave me the validation that I was looking for in bad relationships and things like that. So as I begin to seek the Lord and, and, and follow after him, my life began to evolve into different things. It didn't just start like boom and everything changed. It just began to evolve. I began to speak out and be a little bit more vocal with my faith and tell people, you know, I, you know, God changed me. I begin to witness to people. Um, I, I begin to do um, jail ministry and just different things like that. I did go on to complete my nursing degree and I became an, a registered nurse and I was working at different hospitals. I was working in um, different places and and I just, um, people would come up to me. God would send people to me that had issues and problems. And they would just say, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I don't know why I'm talking to you. And I wouldn't know. And I would just smile and just begin to minister to them as the Lord would lead me to, to do so. Um, so everything kind of just evolved. And um, even with my former um, husband, um, you know, eventually... Because a lot of times when you get, before you start working with the Lord, you make a lot of decisions based on what you think is the right way, or you think, you know, that you're going. And so that's why that marriage um, came to be, and is why that marriage, um, it, it wound up disintegrating. Um, and he eventually, he left. Um, just out of the blue. I mean, we had had some issues and problems and different things like that, but he left. And I mean, it was devastating to me. Um, I didn't understand, you know, what was going to happen, what was going to go on and different things like that. But even that, I believe, you know, God was still able to get the glory out of it. I'm not going to say it was God's will. I'm just going to say that even in that God was able to get the glory out of it. So I, I think to answer your question, it's not that, you know, everything just happened out of the blue. It just it just evolved slowly but surely as I was following after the Lord, different things just started to come into place. Hmm. Uh, we are visiting with a Anna Moore. She is the uh, wife of Pastor Lawrence James Moore, Jr. of Empowerment Life Changing Worship Center. And um, so if somebody comes up to you and says, uh, hey, Anna, I know that you're a pastor's wife. Uh, what is your life like being a pastor's wife? Are you a, are you a role model? Are you a person that people seek out for advice? Are you a person that, you know, uh, kind of tries to complement the ministry your husband has? What is a, what is a pastor's wife? So we can kind of understand. Well, I think everybody has a call and, and it might be a little different and I'm not into I'm all of the above. You know, people do come to me prior to um, meeting and marrying my husband. I also was in ministry. So um, I was active in ministry. I go out and I speak to different people. Um, I have a youth group that I do. And, you know, I, I, I enjoy evangelism. I enjoy speaking to the people that were like me, that's the, the youth that were kind of re that are rebellious, that are kind of like lost, don't know their own identity. Those are the ones I love them. I love speaking to them to let them know that there is hope. You know, um, the women that have made bad decisions, you know, have found themselves in situations, relationships that are they're not happy with. I love to minister to them. And I use my testimony oftentimes to let them know it's not so much of where you came from because God is able to transform and to change you. And so 
I think that that's where I bring the complimentary to my husband's ministry is that women come in. I'm not just the one that's sitting on the front row, but I'm there to be a support to the ministry, to my husband, as well as to those that God sends my way. The uh, saying in the Bible that the Lord will use a willing vessel is very true in many ways. Now, if you know a little bit about the Bible, one of the things you probably have seen or heard or have read is that there are nine spiritual gifts in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Tongues and healings and uh, interpretation of tongues and and, uh, miracles and and, and things like that that fall into those categories. But one of those spiritual gifts is called prophecy and a prophetic word. And I understand that the Lord has used you in that area. Am I right? Yes, you're right. You're, you're right. So could you explain, especially for the people that are maybe new to Christianity or don't really understand but are seeking mm-hmm. what prophecy and a prophetic word in the Christian walk is really all about? Well, one of the things that the Lord really uses his people to do is to show other people that he is real. And one of the ways that he does show people that he's real is when he gives a person like a word of knowledge or something that someone else, you know, you know that someone does not know. You didn't tell anybody, but they know it. Um, and the Lord has used me in, in that capacity um, while I'm ministering to people um, to let them know that God is concerned. You know, there's times that, you know, you've been praying and you've been praying and yet you don't you might not see the results right away. And at times God will use different people to let you know, you know what, that prayer that you were praying, God heard you and he, you know, he sent me to tell you whatever the case may be. And that helps stir up the faith of unbelievers or even believers that might be down in their faith. So that's one of the ways that the Lord does use me is to speak a word to people um, or to let them know something before it's going to happen. And that's not to say like a psychic or anything like that. People can't just come up to me and say, well, just give me a word. It has to be the Lord leading me to share something with them. And most of the time it's something that God has either placed in their heart, a question that they've asked or something like that. And then the Lord would use me to speak to someone, to encourage them to have faith, not in me, but in the Lord. A couple things I want to add to that. Uh, number one, that uh, things that are done with these spiritual gifts are always done to glorify the Lord. Amen. And they are always under the direction, leading, guiding, and direction of the Holy Spirit. Whereas, you know, if you're listening and saying, well, you know, I talk to the psychic or mm-hmm. the card reader or the, you know, I do the Ouija board. You're really uh, under the authority of the dark one, the devil, exactly. with those, those things. Those are demonic activities. There's a big difference. So if you don't know Jesus and you're hearing us talking about prophetic words, please don't intertwine the two because they're exactly. very, very different. One operates under the authority of the, the, uh, the, the devil, uh, and one operates under the authority of the, uh, God the Father and, and Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, big, big difference. But prophecy uh, is, is a wonderful gift. Now, uh, very interesting when I was, and I, and I hate to keep going back, but it kind of all ties together, so I hope you'll forgive me. Okay. <laughs> but uh, when we were visiting with your husband, he was talking about, you know, his um, way that he got that first book published being self-published, mm-hmm. and of course that's led to the second book, mm-hmm. which is being put out by Tate Publishing. But he also mentioned to me, which is very interesting, because the Lord always sends people into other people's lives that has gifts that can be of a help. Mm -hmm. So I understand that you have a little bit of knowledge in publishing as well, and you have even, am I right, co-written a book? Yes, I have um, two, actually three books I co-wrote with other people. Two of them I I published. Now, before, before we talk about those books, were they prior to meeting your husband, any of that work, or... Was this knowledge that you brought into the marriage or happened after the marriage? It was actually knowledge that I brought into the marriage. Um, I had the two books prior to us meeting and marrying, and then the next book is what um, happened after we got married. So in in your case and in Pastor Moore's case, not only did the Lord send into his life what he needed, 
but not only was it for the books that he wanted him to put out, but he also sent a wife that he wanted him to have. So he the Lord does. does work. And he really does. Yeah. He does. I'm telling you, because when I was going through that horrible time after my ex-husband had left and all of the things, I'm like, God, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? I, I there was certain things that I had prayed about that I wanted in a in, in a husband. I said, Lord, if I ever get married again, I would want, you know, some things. And can I tell you? I got what the what I had prayed about, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. even someone I could work with in books and different things like that. So it's amazing. God, he, he is so real. Uh, one of the books is entitled When New Life Begins. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Yes. And and what is that about? That one is the, the latest book that I um, co-wrote with with seven other people and it's a testimonial book and it has um just different stories it has seven different stories different different people different struggles that um how god changed from one part to the to another part um like for instance one one young lady her her legs had been amputated as a as a child at at uh, 10 months old she was born to a drug addict uh, mother she you know went through a lot and as a res- you know, you, you will read about her story and just how she overcame another person, um, a guy, he found out that he had a daughter. Um, the daughter was 12 years old. He, he didn't know anything about her. She was going up for adoption. And um, he talks about that. And my part is called Second Chance at Love. And I talk about how I met my husband now and, you know, how God moved. Well, the Lord knew what he was doing because you're on now on a program called Second I know. Chances. That's why I yeah. laughed. I laughed when I yeah. when I said that. Oh, this is the name. I said, "Look at God." Yeah, uh, I'll I'll share a real quick story with you, and then I have a couple more things I want to ask. But we are visiting with Ayana Moore. She's the uh, uh, pastor's wife of. Uh, she's the wife of Pastor Lawrence James Moore Jr. She has a wonderful testimony. She uh, and her husband uh, share in the ministry at Empowerment Life Changing Worship Center. Oakland Avenue in Millville, accessible if you're familiar with Millville. There's a super Wawa right off of Route 49 there at Orange Street. You go up to uh, Oakland Avenue, you hang it right there, and it's in a big white warehouse building. Am I correct? That's correct, and it says Soldiers for Christ. Yes, yes, so you share mm-hmm. that building there. Um, one, of the, one of the things that uh, the Lord does is he does things, and sometimes, and I know from experience, we're almost too stubborn to receive it. Let me let me clarify what I mean in my case. When the Lord opened up the door to bring me to this facility I'm at, I resisted it and I said I, I had every excuse possible. Some of them were true, but some of them were just things that the Lord could do. I just wasn't ready to surrender. Well, anyway, I get past all that. And when my business first began, I had my pastor pray over the business. And he basically said that I was going to have a Uh, worldwide ministry and and, um, um, spread the word to all the corners of the earth and the names you know the worldwide name kept coming up over and over again so it wasn't until I got past all that stuff and I came into this building it was a rainy pouring miserable day but it was a happy day and I walked up to the front door after getting just about all my stuff inside here and trying to sort out all this mess that I realized the Lord sent me to a building called Wheaton Worldwide, wow. and the first thing you see when you walk in the entrance is a map of the world. Wow. So sometimes as Christians or new believers, or whatever the case may be, it could be right in front of us. Sometimes we're just a little too stubborn to see that. Mm. Uh, have you ever had any of those moments? I've, yeah, I have. I've, I've had many of those moments because a lot of times we lean into our own understanding, I, and I believe that that's why Proverbs tells us, Proverbs 3, 5 through, 5 through 6, says, Lean not into your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. And I think that if we ever start to lean to our own understanding, we'll start closing doors, we'll start looking at our own ability. For me, with writing, um, like I had mentioned earlier, I was a troubled teen. So I, I was in and out of school. I was kicked out of school. I didn't really have a lot with the English part of it. So I was, I I battled with the insecurity of writing. I don't think I could write. And then when I got saved and like I said, the whole process of being saved and walking with the Lord, when the Lord started to show me books to write and, and then he told me, you're going to have a publishing company and all the things to me and my own understanding, I'm looking at my own ability and my own limitations. I'm like, there's no way I can do that. You know, I don't know. But 
like you said, when I just surrendered and say, God, okay, I'm going to do the best that I can do. The Lord said, if you do your best, I'll do the rest. And from that point on, he sent me the editors. He sent me the graphic um, designers. He sent me the people that I need, um, you know, to help to, to fulfill the vision. And that's what God will do for, you know, any person who's willing to, to not lean into their own understanding, but to trust the Lord. He will definitely um, send you what you need and he'll give you whatever you need. Do you find that uh, God's favor is an amazing thing when you're around others? God's favor is just amazing no matter what, because when you look at your own life, especially if you came from someone from my background, you wouldn't believe the things that God could do to you through you and for you. You know, when you look at yourself and you look at the bad mistakes and the decisions that you've made, you almost think that you disqualified yourself. But then when you see how God says, no, you know what? I love you. And, and he begins to clean you up and transform your life from the inside out. It, it, it just, it just, this is why I'm one of the reasons why I just love him so much and just uh, humbled by, you know, him. We are visiting with Ayanna Moore. She is the co-author of a book entitled When New Life Begins. Is there a way that one can obtain a copy of that book? Can they do searches on Amazon? or? Yes, it's how? on Amazon. It's also on my website, www.cb-publishing.com. So it's cbpublishing.com. CB dash. There's a little dash in there, publishing.com. Okay, and so it's also on Amazon, yes. It's a hyphen or an underscore? Hyphen, right? Hyphen. Yes. cb-publishing.com. Yes. Has the link to your book there mm-hmm. about you and, and all that? Yes. That's okay. my publishing site, and it has this book and the other books as well. Is uh, Pastor Moore's book on there as well? Can you yes. find? Okay. Yes, it is. So we can use that same website to get learn about both of you. Amen, yes. Okay, wonderful. Now. It's always not about us, but it's about what the Lord wants for us. And if the Lord has been tugging on you and has been saying, you know, I know you don't listen to Christian radio shows, and you know, and you're probably saying, well, why am I listening to this show? Well, maybe it's because the Lord has been trying to get your attention. And the Lord has been trying to set up a perfect opportunity for you to hear from people that, you know, maybe were where you were at, now they were a few years ago and you could see how the lord has transferred their lives transformed them and you say i want they have what they have i know that what i have has not been hitting on anything forget it i want that life i want that peace that passeth all understanding i want the lord to lead guide and direct my steps i want that and you say can i have the opportunity we're going to give you that opportunity right this minute if you're ready to change your life and to give it over to jesus christ and to live for him not to the prince of darkness but the prince of peace we're going to give you that chance right now and ayana would you be kind enough to lead us in that prayer for those sinners that are ready to be set free right this minute father i realize that i have done all the things that i wanted to do and yet i'm still unhappy i'm still miserable my life is in shambles and Father, I just realized that I need you. I need more. There's more to life than where I'm living. Even though I might have achieved some things and that would have made other people happy, I realized that I need you. So I'm asking that you would come inside my heart, that you would begin to transform me, that you would begin to show me what other people are saying about you, that you are real, that you love people, that you transform lives. Father, I just ask that you will begin to show yourself that that you are real. And Lord, I just pray for each and every person that decides to change and to transform their life, that they need you, that you will begin to move in their life, that you will begin to show them who you are and then who they are and what you have called. I, I pray that you will begin to give them peace, that you will give them comfort, that you would just begin to transform and change their life. And Lord, we know we're witnesses that you are more than able, that you're more than willing to do that. And we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It has been a pleasure. Our guest has been Ayanna Moore. She is co-publisher of When New Life Begins. The name of the other book? (laughs) This that other book is called Dear Lord, I Think I Married the Wrong Person. 
Don't tell your husband that, okay? That was before him. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was before him. I kind of thought so. And she is the wife of Pastor Lawrence James Moore Jr. of Empowerment Life Changing Worship Center. By the way, you can obtain a copy of the book, learn about her, her husband, the ministries, and all that by visiting what website? www.cb-publishing.com. And tune in next week for more Second Chances from Advantage Radio Ministries.